Welcome to section two of Immunology Pharmacology. In this section, we'll be discussing tacrolimus. Let's get started. Before we jump into the image mnemonic, I think it would be helpful to take a step back and conceptually understand the mechanism of tacrolimus. As you can see, this is an overview figure of the various immunosuppressive drug targets within a T helper cell. Notice that tacrolimus binds to the protein FKBP, which is also known as FK506 binding protein. From here, tacrolimus and FKBP inhibit calcineurin. As you can see from here, the mechanism and pathway is very similar to cyclosporin. Ultimately, IL-2 transcription is inhibited, which decreases T cell growth and therefore decreases the ability of the immune system to fight off infection. This also prevents organ transplant rejection and can help mitigate the effects of autoimmune diseases. All right, with this background, let's dive into the specifics and help you memorize tacrolimus. This scene will take place inside of a classroom. Notice that some mischievous student has placed a pointy thumbtack on the teacher's chair. The sound tack in the word thumbtack sounds like tacrolimus and should help you remember that this image is all about tacrolimus. Now you can see that we've shown the thumbtack on top of a nice fluffy pad. This pad has the letters FKBP on it, which stands for fluffy comfy butt pad. After all, it's fluffy, comfy, and a pad for the teacher's butt against the hard wooden chair. In any case, this fluffy comfy butt pad should make you think of FKBP. Also, the fact that the thumbtack is on top of this pad should help you remember that tacrolimus binds to FKBP. Unfortunately, the teacher didn't realize that this thumbtack was on her chair. So, as she sat down to eat her lunch, she had a nice surprise waiting for her. Now we can see her jumping up in pain. As a result, she has accidentally knocked over her milk and sausage links she was planning on having for lunch. We introduced this symbol in the cyclosporin video, but the milk should make you think of calcium, and the sausage links should make you think of a neuron. So calcium plus neuron for calcineurin. The fact that the food is being destroyed should make you think of calcineurin inhibition. So putting this all together should help you remember that tacrolimus along with FKBP inhibit calcineurin. One of her students was drawing on the desk minding her own business when she got splattered by the knocked over milk. I guess it was probably for the best because the student was actually vandalizing the desk and drawing a warrior with a T-shaped flail directly into the desk. Recall that the T-shaped flail is our symbol for T-cells. The fact that it's getting splattered in milk and destroyed should make you think of T-cell inhibition. So putting these ideas together should help you remember that tacrolimus blocks T-cell activation. In addition to spilling milk on her student, notice that the teacher is squishing this worker guy with her chair. He was hired by the school to install these nice new interlocking wooden floors in the classrooms. Interlocking wooden floors like this are our symbol for interleukins. Also notice that he's holding two panels, one in each hand, and this should make you think of the number two. Finally, he's being prevented from installing the floors, which should make you think of inhibition or prevention. So collectively, these ideas should help you remember that tacrolimus prevents transcription of interleukin-2. You may have been wondering who put that thumbtack on the teacher's chair. Well, it's probably pretty obvious now. This bully kid front and center, of course. Notice that he's also being a bully to the student in the black shirt by kicking open his lunchbox. His lunchbox has a slab of raw meat in it and looks kind of like a transplant cooler, which should make you think of transplant. It's also being kicked away or rejected by the bully, which should make you think of rejection. Together, these ideas should help you remember that tacrolimus can be used for acute transplant rejection. All right, now let's discuss the side effects associated with tacrolimus. The poor student lost his lunch meat, but the good news is that he still has his green kidney beans. If you look at the one green bean on his desk, we can see that someone has taken a bite out of it, which alludes to the idea that the kidneys are harmed by tacrolimus. So these beans are here to help you remember that tacrolimus is nephrotoxic. Now we've shown the bully eating some sausage links. He must have pulled them from the lunchbox before he kicked it across the room. This is our symbol for neurons because the sausage links resemble neurons. And it's in this part of the image to help you remember that tacrolimus is neurotoxic. As the lunchbox flew across the room, it clashed into the trash can and caused a bunch of dust and infectious particles to fly up into the air. These distinct infectious particles should help you remember that tacrolimus increases the risk of infection. This makes sense, right? It's an immunosuppressive agent, so patients are more likely to get sick when using this drug. Towards the back of the classroom, we can see the good side of humanity. Notice that there is a bald girl sitting on her desk with a cancer hope ribbon around her neck. She must be going through chemo and is now going bald. Her friend is kind enough to cut off a piece of her own hair and offer it to her. Anyway, the cancer reference should help you remember that tacrolimus increases the risk of malignancy. Finally, if you look closely at the girl giving her a lock of hair, you can see that it has many dyed beads in it. This should make you think of diabetes and is here to help you remember that tacrolimus increases the risk of diabetes. All right, that should be everything you need to know about tacrolimus.